have a cough. And this week we are back in the kitchen at Blanc Burgers with their founder and owner, Ernesto Peralta. Did I say your name wrong? I practice. I okay. Peralta. Okay, Ernesto. Obviously, Kansas City was born. Where were you born? I was born in Mexico. Okay, you've been in Mexico City, and how did you find your way to America and then Kansas City? When I was 16 years old, my family moved to Tucson, Arizona, uh, where I actually started my marketing career. I started working at different uh, bars and restaurants. I lived in Tucson for 19, 19 years. Uh, but 11 years ago, I got divorced. The girl that I was married to is from Kansas City. She moved to Kansas City with my kids. So, so you I, moved to Kansas City? I moved to Kansas City, correct. So you came here, did you have a plan or you just you wanted to be with your I children? wanted to be with my kids. I gave everything that I had. I gave back everything that I had to something when I came here. So I had no plan. I didn't know anybody. I didn't right. know what I was going to do. So how did your life begin in Kansas City? When I first moved to Kansas City, the first place that I went to apply for a job was a place called the Westing Crown Center. Yes. It is at the Westing Crown Center that the guy who hired me said, hey, very soon a restaurant is going to open up across the street, Morton's, the steakhouse. Of course. They opened that place up. I worked there for about two years uh, until the captain group opened up on the plaza. Mm -hmm. It is then that they asked me to come and work with them. I actually spent about six years working for the captain. All right, so was it always in the capacity of mixologist or bartender? So yes. that's, that's been your thing? My, my thing, I have been a bartender for about 25 years. All right, so and obviously we're enjoying what you have learned here at your very own unique bar in Kansas City. So, from years of in food service, specifically as bartender, how did you find your way to opening a restaurant? Because that's still another step correct. in a new direction. Well, correct. You know, I guess that's everybody's dream. You know, when you are in you the dream. industry, you want to own your own place. Okay. Uh, but what, what happened, uh, I met a girl uh, who worked in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up getting married. Mm -hmm. And then we started talking about, you know, kind of the things that we wanted to do. So we came back to Kansas City to open up a little place in, uh, in Midtown called uh, The Drop. The Drop, I'm familiar with it. Okay, mm -hmm. so it was at The Drop that I actually became a restaurant owner. And it is then, oh. there, when we started thinking and talking about what we'll we be doing next. That's when we decided that we were going to do a burger place in Westbrook. But not just any burger place. Uh, oh, we, no. we knew what we wanted, but we didn't know how it was going to turn, turn out. Okay. Uh, it is then that we painted all the walls white, and uh, it is then that we started thinking, what are we going to call this place? So my wife said, why don't we call it Blanc, B-L-A-N-C, which, which means white in, in French. French. Yes. And French and gourmet food goes together. It and does. we were going to be doing gourmet burgers. It was Blanc burgers and bottles. And that's why. Okay. So that, I, I like the, your process. Obviously, you took a great deal of care to come up with how the space would feel because that's when you start experiencing your dining. You walk in, how does it feel? What does it look like? And then from there, it's all about the food and the service and presentation. So Blanc Burgers plus bottles. So let's talk about the burgers because you make all your sauces from scratch. And I love the fact that you've done so much local sourcing for your products. Let's talk about that. We wanted to create uh, a very unique place mm -hmm. in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. We did not want to do a burger place that had different burgers with different toppings, or basically the same burger with different toppings. Yes. Uh, we wanted to have different flavors in the burgers, because the idea was to get you to come in here today and eat a burger made with beef today, but maybe tomorrow a fish burger, or maybe the next day, you know, uh, a pork burger. Yes. Uh, we also decided that when we wanted to open this place, nobody really knew who we were, but we knew what we wanted to do. One of the things that we did do was utilize some of the really cool companies that Kansas City has to offer. And aren't we lucky, and yes, we have wonderful companies. So we decided to partner up with places like uh, Farm to Market, which makes our bread fresh fabulous. daily. Fabulous, fabulous. Uh, Liberty Fruit, which is a huge local company. Mm -hmm. Of course, we use Chateau Milk and Fus Coaster to make our shakes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're a bottle place, so we use a Boulevard uh, products. Mm -hmm. uh, we also utilize roastery coffee. 
uh, and then we try to use as many local people as we can. Well, you know, that's appreciated by this community. You're a part of this community. You're locally owned and you are chef driven and your burgers are unique. I think you were one of the pioneers in Kansas City for opening up whether you want to call them designer or upscale burgers, but they're they're wonderful. And we're going to make salmon today. So we're departing from the red meat and going into, which you've done a wonderful job since the very beginning, providing that variety between on those buns. Okay, now let's talk about the drink side because I was finding drinks here that I couldn't find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. What was your concept for the bottles The portion? bottle side. Well, we wanted to pay attention to the drinking side as much as we were doing on the eating side. Mm -hmm. So the burgers were premium burgers. Yep. And we wanted to pair them up with premium beverages, whether it was a bottle of wine, a bottle of soda, or a bottle of beer. Okay. And that, your soda pop, what was it? I saw a bottle of Coca-Cola. Mexican Coke, yes. That has no high fructose, fructose corn syrup. So it was wonderful that you brought some of your heritage, your country, to <laughs> us. We appreciate your sharing. But it tasted like Coke tasted 50 years. It's the original recipe. The right. original recipes. And a lot of fun soda pops and, of right. course, Boulevard Brewing. And so you've taken local. you brought some of your heritage with you, and you've provided a unique space and concept, and you were one of the pioneers. We appreciate all the work and the care and the passion that you have put to make Blanc Burgers happen. Well, thank you very much. So now I think that we should talk to your executive chef, Jason Eggers, and learn a little bit about what he's accomplishing every day in your kitchens. And then we're going to go in the kitchen and we're going to make one of your signature dishes. Perfect. Thank you once again for inviting us back into your kitchen. You're very welcome. We continue the section of Chat with the Chef with Blanc Burgers executive chef, Jason Eggers. Jason. Thank you for inviting us back into your kitchen. Okay, so we talked with Ernesto and we learned about his journey to Blanc Burgers and his concept for the creation of this restaurant. What is your journey? Uh, my journey brings me from California out uh -huh. to the Midwest. Uh, it was about 10 years ago, probably actually more like 12. Okay. Uh, I became interested in the culinary arts. I was doing construction, hated my job, hated every day of it. Um, was cooking at night when I got home and Everybody was loving that. I love so. that. I love these stories where someone starts out with their career in one direction and then has the courage to say, this isn't working, I want to do that. And yep. you did that, and good for you. Yep. So from construction, you love cooking, you pursued it. I pursued it with everything I have. Good um, for you. I worked my way up in this business. Within three years out of culinary school, I had my first sous chef job. Um, within That's Four years out of culinary school, I had my first exact job. So, okay, I where did you go to culinary I school? I went to culinary school in a. Uh, it's actually a very small culinary school yes. in Roseville, California, okay. right outside Sacramento. It's called uh, IT. It, I took their culinary program. Um, I started with a class of about thirty-five people. Yes. Our graduating class was two people. I know. I know. Because and, and did this include some internships? Yes. Okay, and this is what I'm told by chefs. I said, well, what advice would you give to someone who has an interest in this industry? And the first, always, the first piece of advice is get into a kitchen yes. and start cooking. Yes. The hours are long. It's yep. hot. You are on your feet. It is physically challenging. If you don't mm -hmm. love it, learn about it before you ever begin doing yes. this work. Yes. And so... Your passion carried you right on through school, yep. and four years out, and you're an executive yep. chef, and like you I said, still was, love it. I still love it. That was about 10 years ago, so I uh, moved out here for family reasons. You know, yep. All my family's out here. That's a good reason. And so far, so good. I like it, and found this place ever since then. This is where we've been. This is where you've been. Okay. So your journey, you made it a career change. You went and got the education, yes. the internships, and now you are executive chef. So executive chef is more than just cooking. I mean, you provide yes. the leadership in the kitchen. What is it you want to impart to your cooks there? Um, the same passion I have. Okay. You know, I mean, that's the, the first thing I look for when I hire someone is someone that's 
passion. I don't want someone that wants a job. I want someone that, that makes a lifestyle out of this, that knows what it entails and says, I'm a, I want more, I'm hungry for it, and I really want to know how to make good food. Because when I have an entire staff like that, I guarantee you that everything coming out of my window is going to be perfect and delicious. And you know, we can feel this on the plate. We experience this passion that you talk about here yes. on the plate. So you're making decisions, first of all, about who walks in the door, and this isn't just about a job. You need to recognize that in them. What is your inspiration? I mean, this is hard work. How do you stay inspired? Um, it's a lot of things. Same thing, you know, um, as far as the passion goes, it's something yes. I love doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you almost want to close your eyes and just go <laughs> to like another place. You're like, oh, it's so good. And so the fact, to get there, to get to yeah. that experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one of my, I think my biggest inspiration is that look on other people's faces when they try the food. Um, it's just, I mean, that's the whole reason we do it. That's the reason you do it. And I hear this from chefs as well. At the end of the day, you are trying to please other people. Exactly. You want them to enjoy what you've done yep. for their own pleasure. And it's gratifying to you as, yeah. as well. So it really does. And I say this, you know, if you've just had a wonderful dining experience, tell your server to go back and tell the chef oh, that it was wonderful because it matters to you. And conversely, if something wasn't quite right, I'm sure you want oh, yeah. to. I always want to know when something know. wasn't right. I want to fix everything I possibly can. Okay. So the feedback is yeah. valuable. Yeah, it's very valuable, is valuable to, to you. Um, what are we making today in the kitchen? Today we're going to do an Asian marinated salmon. Uh, we're so serve I'm it. so glad we're doing this because people say blanc burgers. Well, if I want, if I don't want red meat, how do I have blanc? You can yes. still have a blanc burgers experience. Yes, I mean, okay, we have so. the mahi mahi on the menu, but I decided to go with this Asian marinated salmon. Okay. Um, it is on a sesame seed bun. We're doing a wasabi aioli, and it's mm. got a spicy slaw on top. Oh. It's fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite um, burgers I've created since I've been here. And okay, so this is your creation, yes. too. It's your creation. And how do you come up with these creations? Are you are you going for a particular flavor profile? How do you... Um, like, how did you come up with this creation? It's just, you know, the Asian flavors and the salmon already go so well together. And that's one thing about what we do here is taking dishes that, A, have either inspired us in the past or that we've yes. done before. And yes. And... Figuring out how to put it between two, between a, a bun, you know, okay. put it between two pieces of bread. So you are pairing, and I see this. You are pairing the buns with. Oh yeah. Um, what's between them? Yes. That that's all part of the tasting yes, experience, and the sauces that you do here. I know they're all. I mean, ketchup, homemade, yep. the mustard put together. Yep. This didn't come out of some big vat no. in a big plastic thing that arrived nope. here. You're putting them all together. Yes, we are. So we know we can count on some of our favorites because some of us are fussy about that sort yes. of thing. But we also know that when we come here, there's going to be some new things for us to try. Definitely. And, and that's an ongoing process. Ernesto, it sounds like, has given you that creative freedom. Oh, yeah. So you get to do that as well. Okay. Well, I think you and I should go into the kitchen. No, let's do it. I think we should make that signature dish. And I think you should come with us. So we are now in the kitchen at Long Burgers Plus Bottles with their executive chef, Jason Eggers. Jason, where do we begin with this signature dish? Uh, what I would normally begin with is the Asian marinade, okay, which actually I already have a little bit made up because it's a little bit of a process, kind of time consuming to make it. Basically, we took all of these ingredients. So, so what we're looking at is sesame oil. Uh, this is called ketchup manis. Okay. It is a uh, it's a sweetened soy sauce production. Um, adds a lot of balance, a lot of sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. So that little bit of that goes in there. Soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, sweet chili thai, and hoisin. All these can be found, most of them at your grocery store, some of them that you might have to go to the Asian food market for. Okay, and if you are wanting to pull a product off the shelf, could you get an Asian marinade product? You, you could. Um, it won't have this flavor. Yeah, it won't be the same. It won't be the same. But you can and definitely get one off the we shelf. we will have this recipe up on the website. Yep. So, okay. So, we made this marinade with these ingredients, and what did we do with our salmon? Um, we basically, I took the salmon, I cut the skin off, and we went ahead and put it in the marinade. 
All right, how long do we want the salmon in this delicious marinade? Uh, about an hour and a half to two hours. And so from here, this little guy goes to the grill? Yep, we're gonna go put it on the grill and we're gonna go ahead and put our sesame bun on the grill as well. All right, so we created the marinade. The salmon has been in the marinade for two hours in the refrigerator. Yes. What do we do now, chef? Um, as always, when you're grilling fish, you wanna make sure you have a really hot grill. Okay. And you always use some pan spray or even some vegetable oil on a towel, paper towel. Although you don't want to light yourself on fire. No fires, no, no. We're going to go with a good amount of spray. We'll take our salmon and lay it right on there. And I noticed that you laid the salmon away from you. Yeah, I just want to make sure it hits the grill right. We get some grill marks, doesn't stick too bad. And you selected sesame because it blends well with all the flavors. That's correct. And where's he, where's he going to go? He's going to go right here on our flat top. I'm going to do a little bit of vegetable oil. So you can do this in a frying pan if you don't have a yep. yep, you can even just brush it with a little vegetable oil and put it in the oven and get oh, it kind of toasty if you okay, like. Okay, great. The salmon's on the grill, the bun's on the grill. Now we're going to make the aioli. Yep. How do we do that? Uh, we're going to start with a couple eggs. You just want the yolks, though. We're going to make an aioli, so all you want is the yolks. You don't want whites. You know, and if you're nervous about this, I, I suppose you could substitute with, some people substitute with mayonnaise, but I yes. want you to know that that is how I separate my eggs and my egg yolks, and I, it's a winner every time. Yeah, so you basically... And so does Jacques Pepin from yeah. the... Yes, he does. So basically, you just want to go ahead and get rid of all of the... Uh, the whites off of there. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead and dump that one in there as well. guys in there too. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and go with some of the wasabi. And you and can get pasteurized eggs as well if you're a little nervous about that. Yes, the you can. I mean, you, you can use a mayonnaise. It's not. It's gonna always have a mayonnaise taste. It's not gonna have an aioli taste, which is why I use it. Oh, I can already smell the wasabi. All right, and then we got a uh, about a half ounce of ginger. All right, so about you just peel it and you sliced it once, and it was ready yep. to go. Yep. Fresh ginger, really, there's not a substitute. No, there's not. No, no. The dry ginger just doesn't do it. Just doesn't then do one it. clove of garlic, it's gonna go right in there. Ginger, garlic, egg yolk, wasabi. And we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. The little guy's gonna buzz down now. I have a mixture of the sesame oil and a little bit of salad oil. I'm gonna take a smell. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend, it's a toasted sesame oil, yes. and that adds such richness. Yes. So we're creating sort of an Asian mayonnaise. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, now, the reason I mix it with the vegetable oil is because sesame oil is very strong. It's very intense. So there's only about two tablespoons in here, and there's about a, a cup and a half of, uh, of regular vegetable oil. Like you can use canola oil, but yep. you don't want an oil with flavor because exactly. the sesame oil is doing that. Exactly. Okay. So now we're going to pour it in really slow. We're going to create what's called an emulsification. Just want to get a few drops in there. We're going to let that mix with the egg yolks. I think it's important to remember that when you add oil to something you're trying to emulsify, you need to do it slowly so it yes. has a chance to incorporate. Definitely. So what you're looking for is a certain consistency and you add it until you get that. It's sort of uh, a ketchup consistency. Would you say you want that much movement? Or? Probably around there. Around there. Uh, it's okay. going to thicken up to about a mayonnaise consistency, but you want to slowly get it to that point. If you do it too fast, it's going to it's gonna break it and the eggs are going to separate from the oil and then... They just have a big mess. This is another thing where technique, really, it's not just about the ingredients. It's about how you make them all come together. Yeah. So we're getting and, the movement that we want. And now yep. you have a mixture of it's it's just, kosher salt. Yep, kosher salt and, and just fresh cracked pepper. Fresh cracked pepper. You're exactly right. And it looks almost like a 50-50. Yep. A little bit less pepper. A little bit less pepper. We can go with about two teaspoons of that. Okay, the salmon's grilling, the bun's grilling. We've made the wasabi mixture. Now time for the topping. How do we do that? All right, so for the coleslaw, it's really simple. Right. Four or five ingredients. All okay. right. They are. So we're going to take some Napa cabbage. Yes. Finally, it's uh, really thin sliced. Yes. Cilantro. Uh, mm -hmm. I just did whole pick leaves. Put some of that in there. Screams Asian. And green onion. And the fun way that you chopped it up is that you did it sort of on the diagonal. And yep, that's or on just, the bias. Yeah, or, yep. And then uh, some julienne carrot. Okay. Beautiful colors. And then I also hit it with a little bit of black sesame seed. And these are already toasted. Those are, those are beautiful. 
just kind of gives it the, the contrast there. And a little crunch, a little yep. baby crunch. Okay. Yep. And we're going to take some of our salmon marinade. Now, so this is the marinade that we used to for the salmon. Yes. And now we're going to use it for the slaw. Yes, so it makes it perfect for the slaw dressing as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. No, I mean, of course, the salmon wasn't in this batch. No, though. no, no. We know <laughs> not to put raw, you know, raw fish and then use it for another purpose. We wouldn't exactly. think of it. Let me just kind of toss that around a little bit. A little stir. this but it's true we eat with our eyes first yes so we do all the pieces and parts are made yep. how do we make this yummy on the plate all right well you can see we pulled the, the bun off the flat top it's got a nice crispy toast on it so it's going to have a lot of texture to it and just a reminder that you would put some oil on the griddle or your frying pan or yep. you said you could put it in the oven and toast mm -hmm. it okay what next chef uh, we're going to take some of our wasabi aioli Go right hey, there on the bottom of it. You could use this gorgeous aioli for other things other than this sandwich. Oh, couldn't definitely. Oh. On the bottom and the top there. Yep. And go ahead and take our salmon. Beautifully done. This is perfectly cooked, and I think one of the reasons is because it had it was in a marinade, yeah. so lots of moisture, and you cooked it perfectly. It is not dried out. This is a juicy piece of salmon. Yes. All right, so now it is on the bun with the aioli. What next, Chef? Oh, we're going to go ahead and put the slaw right on top of that. And see hands. Now, we had hands before we had kitchen tools. Yes, we did. These are the perfect kitchen tools. As long as you keep them clean, it's and not a problem. We do that. Now, look at that. That and, is And my presentation yep. will be just like that. There's your burger. Okay, I think that we should go to the bar. All right. And I think we should pair this with several options okay. and then serve it up to our celebrity taster. Sounds like a great idea to me. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. All right, we have been in the kitchen, busy in the kitchen with a salmon burger, if you will, with a wasabi aioli, coleslaw on a sesame bun. What to drink with this new signature dish at Blanc Burgers? To answer that question, we're pulling executive chef back to the bar. Chef, what do you suggest to pair this with? Oh, I chose three here, a little bit for everybody. Uh, Good for you. We'll start with the hard cider. Normally I pair it with the beer. We have several beers that would go pretty well with this, but uh, this just really came to mind. It's going to have a sweetness, a little bit of tang. It's going to react with the, uh, the ginger and the wasabi that uh, are going to come through when you eat that salmon, and it's going to just, just balance the flavor really nicely. Okay, so you're recommending a natural hard apple cider mm -hmm. for those who might have done a beer with the burger, but instead we're going to do cider with the salmon. Yes. All right, now for those of us who like wine, mm -hmm. when we dine, what do you suggest? It's not necessarily the birdhouse, but any Pinot Grigio. Just based on the fact that it's a nice white, got some sweetness, still some tang to it, so it's still going to react with that ginger and uh, just the vinegar and stuff in the slaw, but uh, still going to have a nice dryness. It'll give you a good finish. Okay. So for those of us who don't imbibe but still would like something refreshing, yes. what non-alcoholic beverage would you suggest? I'm going to add one with the, uh, the ginger ale. This is a pure cane sugar ginger ale. Once again, it's going to have the sweetness. it be really mm -hmm. good. Um, then you just have that ginger. It pairs with all those Asian flavors. We actually use a lot of ginger in it, as you saw. Um, so it's, it's a really good pairing with it. So we've got something for everyone. Yes. And now I have to tell you the final test. The true test is... We ask a celebrity taster to come in, taste this signature dish you've created, sample some of the drinks that you have suggested. Yeah. To do that, we have invited Doug Frost. He's a wine sommelier. He's a master of wine. We've got a, a stiff uh, contestant here for yeah. our taster, but I know you're up to it. Yep. Okay, let's go. All right, sounds good. We have just been in the kitchen at Blanc Burgers preparing a signature dish. We went to the bar to pair it, and now to taste it, we've invited a celebrity taster, Doug Frost. He is master sommelier and master of wine, and you're going to take, see, you have a job in front of you. I think I can do this. I think you can do this, too, and I should also say the host of... Check, please, on KCPT Public Television 19. Chef, what have we prepared and what did we pair? Uh, today we have the Asian marinated salmon. 
Uh, it's got a nice hoisin, sesame oil, a little rice wine vinegar marinade uh, mm -hmm. with some wasabi aioli. Uh, it also has a little bit of sesame oil in it, some true aioli. Uh, and then the slaw on top is like just an Asian slaw. We basically took the same marinade, turned it into a dressing for the slaw. But obviously the ginger ale, that's yes. our non-alcoholic choice. Um, seemed like the best one to go with, obviously. The ginger, all the ginger and the Asian food, all the flavors that are going to come forward there. Uh, okay. Obvious pairing. The uh, crisp and cider, once again, sweet, a little bit of tang, a little bit of dryness at the end. Um, it's going to accent the cake and the spiciness and the salmon. And then we paired the wine, not specifically with the burger, but with the salmon itself. So, um, once again, it's got the dry notes at the end, with, as well with any pinot. Doug, I should tell you that this is not on the menu at the time of this tasting. This is going to come out in February, so you get, yes, you do. You get to taste it before really others do. I'm down okay. with that. All right. Chef, thank you. Thank you. You guys enjoy Thanks that. a lot, Chef. Okay. Appreciate it. Please. Okay. Yep. Yes. yes. And I'm going to, and then we're going to taste. Yep. Yeah. Is that just... Toothpick comes out, yeah. You know it does. But, oh, mm -hmm. cook to perfection. Mm-hmm. So I guess we should start with the boiling, mm -hmm. with the um, ginger ale. And we'll go up in I'm alcohol, as it were. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's a, there's a, a oh. good amount of oil to this, mm -hmm. which is part of what makes it like a burger. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, burgers are big and fat and juicy and rich and you know when we say juicy and rich can we just admit we mean fat and oil you know uh, okay, is that but, okay but Doug if this is helpful to you at all the fat in this fish is omega-3 and it is actually good for you it's the good fat it's good fat <laughs> what do you okay. think of the ginger I'm going to do something what yeah, do you please, think of, yeah, you I'd think hit of it out of the mouth. with this you know, it, non alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it totally makes sense in so much as the ginger notes obviously link up. It's interesting because what because of the oil, it actually comes up a little bit sweet. It does. Um, isn't that interesting? I mean, what I'm looking for when I have something oily, it, it's like those pickles right there. You know, if you bite into a pickle right yes. now, you'll get all that acid and you'll yes. get, you know, some saltiness and it'll clean up this oil. Yes. It'll make it seem less oily. And that's kind of what I wish this would do. Okay. But there's more sugar in it than you know, That's some ginger ale. Than, a, than a, a typical beer would offer. Yeah, yeah, for sugar. sure. So this might be for one of the folks who do prefer non-alcoholic or for your children if you bring them in here. Absolutely, it's absolutely. That. Okay, so now we have to take another bite. Okay. Okay, That's I fair. mean, you just yep, have yep, to, yep. and then, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we'll oh. check out the cider here. Mm. Now the cider mm. appears to be... I've got a spicy... Mm. Got a spicy bite? I did. That's good. Oh. Well, that makes the sugar work a lot better. That, um, you know, for me, you know, what spice is, is literally a, a heat receptor in your mouth has been fooled into believing something temperature hot has been placed in there. So the trick to making I the spice. I didn't know this. I'm, a, well, of course, a wine person. Why wouldn't you know that? Well, you know, it's it's what we're, we're what we try to focus upon. And and so the idea is, oh. is that you want to clog up that receptor so that the heat receptor is no longer tingling quite yes. the same way. You get a little bit of tingle, but it cools the fire off. For some reason, uh, milk fat, you know, butter fat, things yeah. like that will always clog that up. Oil, to some degree, but oil will act as, a, as an emulsifier as well, and it'll push it through. Um, interestingly, cilantro actually seems to have, we're not sure why, I mean, yeah. I certainly am not sure why, seems to have a... a, a Cleansing. You know, yeah, a base, a, some sort of base effect against the heat. You're yeah. right. Mm. I don't know why it works, mm. but... It does. But sugar as well can be really, really effective. Now this one, interestingly, comes up quite dry. Here, check it out, I'm please. I'm yeah. check it out. Comes too. out quite dry, especially after the boiling. And so you get this really, you know, gentle kind of green apple candy sort of note. Yeah, it's very green apple. Yeah. It's a little, oh. it, you know, for my part, and this is probably, you know, the, the affliction of the wine guy. I need some more stuff. Okay. You know, it's pretty All light. Right. Okay. Um, it, it, you know, there's so much flavor in here. There and again, is. so much oil and so much richness. You know what's good about this is the way the coleslaw has been put together, you can have three bites and have three different experiences from the yeah, same sure. sandwich. Yeah, it's really true. Mm. Oh. I went after a little bit more of the coleslaw Did you get that, that time. You got coleslaw. All right. It could be spicier for me. The wasabi is creating, you know, that aromatic yeah. spice, which is really fun. It is. Because it, it doesn't really do anything more than tingle in the mouth. Okay, what is it? Um, 
So I'm going back and forth with the ginger ale and the, and uh, the apple cider. cider. Yes. Okay. I'd like to mix them. Would that be no? You know what? I won't well, do that. But you know, know I'm like put them together they would be so much better you're tempted okay now now <laughs> you have to try the pinot grigio with this oh, obviously yeah, yeah. he's going for, for sure. a light and something else i i just want to say about what long burgers does and that is they locally source most of their food products this is farm to market bread cool. it's boulevard brewing for their beers they're just doing a roastery coffee foods custard oh their shakes <laughs> yeah well food so food. Love food. So, <laughs> so they're doing a, a a great job of really celebrating what are the food treasures of kansas city here mm -hmm. okay so you're right uh -huh. well let's see what the um mm. pina grigio is all about big house is a fun label you know they make a lot of different wines and and the their Pinot Grigio is, a, is certainly soft, a little bit higher in sugar, which because of this dish, I'm totally down with that. I mean, if there's some heat, I think sugar. Because sugar. sugar, just like milk fat, just like butter fat, can actually clog those heat receptors and bring the, the heat down, which is why, truthfully, the, the, you know, the other way to go on this would be mm -hmm. with a champagne. Most champagnes, most sparkling wines. We don't think wines. of doing that, do we? But yeah. it's pretty versatile stuff, isn't yeah. it? They, yeah, they usually have some sugar, and the bubbles will then help clean up kind of the oiliness of this this dish. Whereas the sugar, all by itself, I, I predict, is still going to make the oil kind of cling a it's, little bit. It's going to. I will tell you, when we were at Starkers and made John McClellan rest in peace. Yeah, he may he paired, rest in peace. May he rest in peace. He paired his fried chicken with champagne. Oh, it he's a worked. smart man. Yeah. Worked. Oh yeah, it, it would. Worked. Okay, now you taste the Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. Oh yep. no, you have to yeah, taste this. Do it again. I mean, we have to do this. You know how it is. We work hard every single day. It's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not as as sweet as I remember it, and it's probably coming on the heels of these others. So. It has a relative uh, cleansing effect on it. It almost stands up to this dish, but ultimately at the end of the day, you know, Pinot Grigio's um, markers are kind of apple and pear. So it's not very far away from this crisp and apple cider in terms of its flavor profile. Right. And I want a little bit more. I mean, right now, I'll predict, in fact, you know, okay. let's do this as long as we you get the pickles. the pickles. One bite of the pickle and you will, will cleanse better than any of these drinks. And that's kind of a, you know, it's a, a rather damning comment, ultimately. Uh -huh. But acid and salt. Thus the, pi thus the pickle. Thus the pickle is there and next to the... that's why I think we want pickle with mm -hmm. foods that are high in fat, because mm -hmm. it does, ex I mean, we didn't, I didn't put it together until you and I had this conversation. That's why we want our pickle. I think it's Gotta true. Gotta have that pickle. It's really mm -hmm. true. We've had many wonderful celebrity tasters make great contributions to this community that we share. But you are the most sophisticated palate of our celebrity tasters is <laughs> Master Sommelier, Master of Wine. How do you get those credentials and what do you do other than go around the country or world drinking wine? Because <laughs> I know you do that. Well, I drink everything I can get my hands on. That's there certainly true. Um, I'm Mikey. You know, I'll just drink anything. You're Mikey. But there's yeah. only, you're one of three in the world with these credentials. That's impressive. You know, the first off, I'll always, always argue that there is no uh, particularly great palette out there. There is no, certainly no palette that is supposed to lead by example that these are the wines that you should drink, that these are the beers that are best. I mean, that's a bunch of, a, a crock of nonsense, frankly, to me, because some, you know, the, the way you're tasting this burger is probably a little bit different than the way I am. Right. Um, because each of us has a slightly different palate. So we have a slightly different flavor and aroma experience, which means there is no universal experience, which means there's no one palate that could ever stand in for everybody. So, you know. No, but I think the trained, educated palate is one that can and does provide great guidance to us for what we are tasting, if nothing else, but to instill that appreciation for what you do and why it works. And, and it, it, just like art or music, the more you know about it, the greater your appreciation of it, what you do. Well, I, I think you, you've hit the, the, the nail on the head in the sense that what somebody like me is supposed to do is provide a frame of reference, you, you know, do. provide context. 
And, and that's created through experience. So precisely to your point, the, the idea is, is that not that I'm the best taster of Pinot Grigio, it's that I'm the guy who's probably tasted you know, 10,000 Pinot Grigios. So I can go, well, in the big spectrum of Pinot Grigios, this is where that one sits. The one thing that I can't do, or no one can do, is tell you, this is the one you're gonna like. Because that's, you know, that's totally nice. personal. Um, so so the, the key is to be able to tell somebody what to expect so they can determine in advance, hopefully before they spend their money, if they're going to like it or not. So, mm -hmm. you know, my the exams that we go through are really built upon that notion. Really about helping the, the everyday person understand the flavor profiles, and what they are, and what they might taste good with in, in, in addition to the flavors and that's you do it so well we're Kansas City has one of three <laughs> in the world um, master of wine and master sommelier and and that's a treasure for us as well and all that you do for the community in KCBT public television I want to thank you for taking time I know you have a crazy schedule I'm glad we caught you near the holidays so you could be a celebrity taster but we really appreciate what you do Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and we are once again in the cellar with Marquis Selections. This week, we are going to pair some cheese and wine, and to help us do that is their director, Chris Cribb. Hi, Bonnie. Thank you for inviting us into your cellar, and this is a great cellar. It is the Liberty High V yeah. Club Room. It is. We <laughs> they built this beautiful facility here in the last year, and we wanted to uh, show it off and show a little bit of... Uh, fine wine and cheese pairing today. We're going to look to you to give us some unique original wines to pair with some of our favorite cheeses because the holidays are coming up and it's time to entertain. It is. <laughs> I, um, I've done my little crash course on uh, on wine and cheese in the last few years. I'll bet. <laughs> I, picked a, I picked a couple of them that I thought were simple, very versatile things for you to be able to choose. Okay. And uh, what, we, what we selected today were um, a wine from Spain. Okay. This is the uh, the Capa Rota. Okay. So the Capa Rota Monastrel Syrah. Mm -hmm. It is um, a blend that's um, from the southern part of Spain, a little bit medium bodied, mm -hmm. a younger wine. Mm -hmm. And um, and we've got uh, chosen to go with that yes. a uh, Spanish cheese. So we're talking Spain as a country and the wine and then Spain as a cheese in uh, a Manchego. And I saw, and I have heard sometimes the things that grow together go together, and you're doing that with absolutely. This. I okay. think that's, that's one of the things that just stood out when we were looking at what we could find that's versatile, that's available everywhere, mm -hmm. but it's also higher quality. And um, so that's so that's what we've got paired up with the um, with the Caparota, and then the second one that we chose here today. Is one that uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with. Is, yes, uh, they are. Parmesan. Mm -hmm. This is the Parmesan Reggiano. So, what I yep. hear is the king of cheese. It's the king. It wears a crown when you're not looking. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the Parmesan, uh, we paired that up with a uh, organic uh, Argentinian Malbec. We do. We. This is the. Uh, we love this guy. The Calajori. Uh, organic legacy so it's a little bit of a higher um, higher end wine it's about a um, $30 per bottle wine something we thought would be a nice one to, uh, to pair with a dry cheese just and, kind of and a, a special occasion yes on a, a special, special occasion, occasion so that you can um, you know when you're trying to, to showcase what both of these have yes. um, show off the different areas so. all right so let's begin with tasting now the the cheese from Spain is, is well, I'm going to taste it and tell you what it is. Mm. Yeah, well, Manchego's got, mm. um, texture-wise, it's, it's not real hard. It, you, you'll find that the Parmesan is very, very hard. This mm -hmm. has got a little bit more of a waxy um, mm. feel to the texture of it. I think it's got a little bit of a kind of a nuttiness to it. It does, and it's versatile. It's accessible, as they say. It is used in a lot of Spanish cooking. Yes. So. It is. They, you know, when oh, you uh, go to a place like La Bodega, you know, they've mm -hmm. used this um, with a uh, with a different type of pasta, mm -hmm. just kind of draped it over the top. It gives you a different flavor than what you find with the Parmesan, because it's not quite sharp as well. It goes better with the flavors of Spain. Okay, and we're going to drink this now. 
you're reminding us this this has been chilled but it's not cold it's not cold you know this is um this is a cellar temperature so 60 degrees okay. coming up to 68 down to 58 something mm -hmm. in that range there um, what used to be cellar in, in someone's house. And we, we need to remember that room temperature is different than cellar temperature, so we so want a little chill on here. Just a little chill. Okay. And so... Mm, to your health. To my cheers. Cheers. So this has got that a little bit of that cherry flavor, a little bit of dustiness. I think it kind of helps to pair with the... Oh. With the cheese, you know, as we... Good get pairing, into, Chris. Um, Kind of brings out a little bit more of that nutty flavor in the cheese itself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and encourage your guests. You know, there's all opportunities to label the cheeses. Absolutely. And you can, well, you wouldn't use my handwriting, but someone surely can write well in your household and put it in so that they can, that the entertainment, the foods that you're entertaining with become part of the conversation. Absolutely. The interaction of people, try this, try that with this. Well, and it's, you know, you mentioned baking too. And this uh -huh. is another cheese that I've, uh, I've heard that has been used in some dessert baking as uh -huh. well with like a, um, like a Kirsch liqueur, like a cherry liqueur uh -huh. syrup to, um, to kind of change what you're trying to do um, on the dessert side. You know, it's real cheese, not cheesecake, but you know, something, cheese. something that's pretty nice. That's wonderful. All right, so we have we have paired this Spanish cheese, Spanish wine. You can use it either as put it on a cracker and um, or use it to cook you with. Know, other, one of the other things that I really like with this is, you know, if you are just putting out a charcuterie plate, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the, the other third piece of the Spanish that you could put out there would be some serrano ham. You know, that prosciutto is what they make in Italy. Right. Serrano ham is its comparison to, and uh, in Spain. In Spain. So it's another third compliment there. And you know what I've seen you you mentioned as a dessert. This is versatile enough that you could use a preserve. We did this at the urban table. We put a um, bread and grilled it and then put preserves over that and then put the cheese and the meat on it and it it took mm. care of anything you could ever want for a for a charcuterie or for your um, hors d'oeuvre. Oh. Okay, so we've got this pairing down. Sure. So we, we went Spain. So now let's mm -hmm. um, well, let's, let's go, go to Italy to, because uh, the, uh, the Italian here. Mm -hmm. And um, we mentioned before Isn't that amazing. This is a younger uh, wine. So this is okay. a 2009. Okay. You can see that we moved into a bigger glass. We have. So tell um, us why. Sure. The Caligiore Malbec. Um, the Malbec grape itself is one of the Bordeaux varietals. So it came from France originally, but it's got its home in uh, in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And this one has been uh, been barrel aged and uh, it comes from very old vines. So it's a more full body. Very full body. Very full body. To the in, medium body that we just had. So, and you have reminded us it wants more air. It does. It, it wants, wants more, more air. air. So that's why we started with the glass. But in the same respect, you could also decant this. Okay. You know, if you don't have the big glasses like this at home, mm -hmm. you know, going ahead and putting this in a decanter will get that extra oxygen so that it's ready to drink now, mm -hmm. as opposed to being uh, in its cellar for five years, which is really what the winemaker probably intended. Okay, but if you're anxious and you lack patience, like, you know, like not do. one of my virtues. I, I hear that 90% um, of wine is consumed within the first few weeks of the I, home, it's so. just, we can't help ourselves. Right. Okay, all right, so I'm going to taste this Parmesan. Now, Parmesan can, you know, there's a variety of ways this happens. Yes. You can grate it over pastas. You can serve it sliced as an hors d'oeuvre. It is in so many foods, but... We primarily use it for Italian dishes, so there are Italian wine is Italian what wine. goes together goes yes. together. Italian wine roots really work well with this. Chianti Classico is another oh, thing yeah. that I, I pair a lot. Um, mm. But um, I think the um, the style of the medium to full body Malbec goes very well with it, just like a Chianti would or a some of the Italian classics that, that also go at the same time. But this Brunello. is the winner. <laughs> yeah. This is the winner for the Parmesan. It just, it's cheap perfection. I was going to say all the other things that you could put on your grilled bread, but it would almost be simple because these two together are stunning. 
it is. It's it, the, stunning. The simplicity of it is really what makes it nice. Mm -hmm. and there's a reason why there's wine and cheese parties and have been for, you know, thousands of years. What it was supposed to be. What it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be. But you, you could think about, there are a number of other things you could also do with it. You know, there's a oh. small type of tamponade type of stuff that you could put with this to bring in some tomatoes. Oh, yes, you know. and the olives. Of olives. Olives, olives really go well with this. This is, the Malbec is so versatile, and of course we love this particular winemaker because yes. he cares about organic, and I know you've personally gone down there to check out the vineyards. I have. You did good on this. <laughs> you, well, this is great. I, this is I great. have to, uh, to tell a small story about okay. this winemaker. This winemaker has Airedale dogs, and the <laughs> Airedale dogs run his vineyards, and he calls them his... Um, his second crew. Oh, okay. They go, he goes through and he clips. They, they call it uh, cuttings. So yes. they clip cuttings off so right. that the wine is very intense. The dogs. And, and that was explained to me is that it, the growth on the vines then is concentrated on producing the healthiest, most, it has the most nutrition for the grape. Absolutely. So it's pruning, I guess. Yeah, it is okay. Pruning. All right. It's so. pruning in, in its essence form. Mm -hmm. You think, oh, you're, you're cutting off grapes. But what you're doing is you're concentrating the supply of water to uh -huh. the grapes so that those grapes that are still there are getting exactly what they need. And he's given them a lot of care. Yes, and, and his dogs, the Airedales, are in love with the cuttings. Oh, they eat so grapes they, right oh, out of they, the vineyard. Oh, they eat grapes. Yes. Okay, well, they so, must be very, very happy dogs. Yes. So for a dog lover and you're looking for a great wine, you, you've got one that the winemaker well has said well. taken well. You've been to Argentina. You are hand-picking the wines for your portfolio and your efforts have paid off. Wine Spectator has said that you have, in the last five years, had some of the best wines at the greatest value. What's your process for achieving that accomplishment? Well, you know, I just as I did with choosing these uh, these actual cheese selections here at High V, I taste, Yay, and you know, we um, we try to go through a process that takes a little bit of science, a little bit of artists, and puts them together yes. so that. We're tasting the best things that are out there, the best competition in the marketplace against what we're looking at, the new wines. Uh, we're only looking for wineries that are doing things green, sustainable, organic. Thank you. So they, um, they have a commitment to our future, and we feel like anyone that's going to be committed to that is going to be committed to making great wine for us. So those, those are the ones that uh, get into the process, and uh, we do uh, some blind tastings to make sure that they're better than their competition. If they do meet all of those criteria, then, and they're a great value, then we uh, look to bring them into the portfolio. So okay, we, so how can we learn more about the wines in your portfolio? Sure. Well, we've got a, uh, a great website that uh, keeps growing every day, um, www.marquee.com. M-A-R-Q-U-E-E. -E. Yeah, Marquee. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have on there uh, all about every one of the wines we have. We've got a little bit of food and wine pairings, information about um, other great wine education ideas, as well as all of the other ways that you can connect with us from a media standpoint. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of those. So. And we can call you too. What's your number? Uh, it's 888-M-A-R-Q-U-E-E. Uh, -E. When we come back into the cellar next week, we're going to get ready for Thanksgiving. All right. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> Me neither. Cheers, Bonnie. Cheers.